Eva. It's so wonderful to have you here. Good morning. Hmm. So I say we just start. I'm I am just like impatient and so eager to go here that um if any you know I, I'm just gonna so I'm gonna start by um muting you all so that if you want to make noise where you are, you wanna sing along, your dog is barking, um you're muted so you don't have to worry about that. And um because you know when I those things happen in my life, you'll just get to enjoy them. So I, I, this is all about you. Today's, today's whole thing is about you, what you need, being comfortable in your space. So you need to get a drink of water. You need to leave for a minute. You want your camera off. You want, whatever it is you need, take care of yourself. Because we're going to have this wonderful adventure, but it's going to take some time. And there will be breaks. I will give you chances to wiggle. And you can always wiggle and giggle. And if you feel like you need to burst into spontaneous dance at any point, you know I welcome that. But also just know that this is what, what works best for you. So as we go into this practice and prayer today, it's, it's your day. And for you know many people, this is a day that's charged. So. I want to start by um, introducing my team. So I am Pule Lehua, and we'll go into a little more of who Pule Lehua is. But Margie Smith, who you can see also has a beautiful Le Po'o, um, it has been with me throughout this process. She's the person who's been willing to be, if you're in, oh, if you're in community view, gallery view, you can see each other. I'm, I'm highlighted, highlight, I'm spotlit so that it just records me. But if you go to community view, which I highly recommend, you will see each other. And Margie is there in your, in your view, probably somewhere near the top. But she has been willing to be with me as I create this presentation. We connect online, we, we edit things. It's been really wonderful. And she's gonna do some of the readings for us today. And then Carol, has been is part of the welcoming prayer team. She's also co-hosting today with Roseanne. And so if you have problems and questions and situations, you can message them. Um, you can use the chat, please, at any point that you have a question or whatever. Plus, I will be encouraging you to use the chat to share things with us as we as we gather together today. Um, Mary Lapham is here from Contemplative Outreach with uh, the welcoming prayer, deliciousness, and and uh, did I remember everybody? And John is was also part of my welcoming prayer commissioning team here in Hawaii. And Meredith is the queen of uh, contemplative outreach. So there you go. And well, you'll get a chance to get to know each other as we go along. But I just want to really thank all the people that have held me in this space as I've gone through this process of immersing myself in the welcoming prayer. Because the welcoming prayer is what saved my life. My son died five years ago. And um, when that happened, it was very difficult for me to continue living. I mean, it's a hard thing to lose someone you love. And um, this practice, I came to this practice in that time. and it made all the difference. And I took the practice and embodied it with um, brain dance, with a practice that bodies the mind, body, spirit. And together, it's really saved my life. So that's why I'm here doing this. And let's go right into the wonderfulness of today. So the welcoming prayer. The welcoming prayer is a practice that's embodied and it comes from contemplative outreach so contemplative outreach hawaii is hosting this this presentation today but it comes from contemplative outreach this isn't a practice i made up this is a practice that i'm presenting from somewhere from contemplative outreach's practices it comes from father keating it comes from mary Morowski. it's 
it's not mine. I am embodying it and presenting it to you from there. So I am not an expert. I am a person who loves this prayer and lives this prayer. And today we're going to do this. So this prayer, I see this as the companion, one of the many companions to centering prayer in my life. So this prayer is consent on the go, is how we refer to this prayer, the welcoming prayer. And here in this picture, you can see heading down the road, going down through life, things might happen. They may come up. Here, I have an open road. This is the po old Polly Road, for those of you on Oahu. And I'm going down this road, and any minute here, there's going to be a sharp turn. And someone's going to come around, and they're going to be on the wrong side. And I'm going to have a moment to respond to that. And it's, 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 you know, we're going really slow. There's no real huge danger, but I get, can get very upset in that moment. The other is on this road, sometimes people are going really, really, really slow, even slower than me. And they're in front of me and I can take the opportunity to bless them and be in the moment and welcome all that I'm feeling in this moment with the welcoming prayer. So who's in the driver's seat when we're, when we're driving? Is it you? Is it me? Is the divine indwelling with you? And that's my, my hope, is that by consenting to God's presence and action in the ordinary daily life occurrences, that the divine indwelling is with me. Throughout this time, you are welcome to, to put questions in the chat. Um, and I'll respond to them as I can. But if you think of something that you want to know as we go through this presentation today, um, you don't have to hold on to it. You can put it in the chat so that you don't have to remember it till later. So who am I? Well, I am, I am a, a one person who is part of the human condition. And today's we're going to talk a lot about the human condition. Um, you're going to see a bunch of pictures pop up here that are all about me. And I started Centering Prayer in 1996. I was introduced to it actually as a, at a morning of prayer at Central Union Church on Oahu and um, by a wonderful person who took me aside and said, oh, here, let me introduce you to Centering Prayer. And then I went to some retreats and learned and started centering all the time. I was fortunate enough to be there when Father Keating came in 2000 to actually do this practice with him up there at St. Anthony's Retreat Center. The welcoming prayer I first learned in 2010 at a, contem at a Contemplative Outreach Hawaii's retreat from Gail Fitzpatrick Hopler. And then, and in that year, my mom died. And this prayer really came into my body. Grief is a big part of life and why the welcoming prayer is so important to me. And then I was fortunate enough, we had other presentations by John and Carol over in 2003 and 2016 in workshops. And then 2016 is when my son died. And that's when I knew that this practice was the practice for me that I needed to live this and wanted to go through the process of presenting it to people. And that's a process which means first I became a presenter for Centering Prayer and then over time here for welcoming prayer. So now I'm going to give you an opportunity to find out who else is here. So welcome, welcome, welcome to everyone who's here. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to talk about who you are and um, at, with your friends. So I want you to give your name, where you are, and now we're going to go on and talk about some of the people who are not here, but that are really part of this practice. So one is Mary Morawski. Mary Morawski, did I say it right this time? I may have, um, is the creator and the spiritual mother of the welcoming prayer practice. She, with residents from the Chrysalis House, developed this practice um, for prayer, for, for life on the go, for when we're in everyday life, we, at least me, I really need to have prayer embodied and prayer that takes advantage of who I am and where I am in the moment 
in this moment. Because as much as I love centering prayer and carry that silence with me, there's a whole lot of life that isn't silent um, and that I'm actively involved in. And from Father Keating, so these two people are the, the reason why we have this prayer and practice. And I love this statement that Mary's bonding with God became so exuberant that everything she's doing is a prayer. I, I mean, my gosh, isn't that the highest of all compliments? Everything we're doing, and I believe everything we're doing is a prayer. So what, why are we here today? What, what is this all about and why are we here? We're, we're gonna be talking about the welcoming prayer, but our task for me, the big part of this is finding all those barriers within myself that keep me from being with the divine and dwelling, that keep me from the, the true source of love. And how are we gonna do this today? Well, today's agenda, we're gonna talk about the human condition. So this is Father Keating's work. We're gonna go into this into some detail. You're gonna have some time to chat about it with your friends. We're gonna go in depth into the welcoming prayer practice and we'll have lots of time to practice it. We'll really be in, in this. When we talk about the challenges and resistance as they're embodied, we will have more opportunities for the welcoming prayer throughout that time. And we will close with our gifts and the benefits of the welcoming prayer practice, as well as giving you ideas of how you can get support to keep that practice going in your everyday life. So who are we, our human bodies? So this is a poem from Rumi that um, is very indicative of the human practice and the human beings. And I'm gonna have Margie unmute herself and read this for us. I'm gonna unmute you, Margie, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> this being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness. Some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all, even if they are a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture. Still, treat each guest honorably. He may be cleaning you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice. Welcome and entertain them all. Meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. Thank you, Margie. And now I'm going to give you just a moment. Again, you're going to have just a couple of minutes in your rooms to just reflect on that for just, you're going to have two minutes. I'll bounce back in again. <laughs> I just, I can't help it that I know I send you to these rooms because I enjoy you coming back in so much. So any of you who would like to share any of your impressions in the chat, again, I welcome you to share things in the chat because I don't get to hear you when you go into the rooms, but hopefully this is bringing this work to, to your total being. Oh, yes. So that conscious, that unconsciousness, all of those things that are our beings. So our bodies are this warehouse of the unconscious. Now today is September 11th, and it's, it's a day that the whole world remembers. And they remember them in, it, it in different ways. There's, there's some beautiful art out there that looks at the whole world crying on this day. But for people in the United States in particular, this is a day where there can be deep grief still felt throughout the nation, felt in the body of the people, just as things that happen in your life are in your body. So 
the things that have happened to you throughout your life are there and often it's unconscious. I feel things in my body, tightness here, there, grief. Oftentimes when things get brought up for me, I notice them in my body and I feel them and there's all of this body. So you see my beautiful Haku and you see this beautiful island and we in the islands are very familiar with islands and we know that there's 20,000 feet of island below that surface. And that is what we're looking at, this unconsciousness, this part that happens to us that's, this is from a beautiful local artist painting who's given me permission to use this here. And it is just an amazing thing what's below the surface and how do we feel that and embody that in our daily life. The experiences are carried in the cells, they're imprinted there. The welcoming prayer will be will, helps heal these wounds of a lifetime by addressing them where they are stored in the body. It's an embodied and enfleshed practice. This body, this warehouse of the unconscious, it's the container for all kinds of things that are unresolved, repressed emotional things of a lifetime. They're in our body below the surface. So. Father Keating's work about basic human needs, there's energy centers. What are these energy centers? Well, one is security, survival, and safety. And so as a very young child, this is my grand niece who's four months old, um, and she has these really basic needs, and we all do. We have these really basic needs when we came in and they stay with us, and hopefully they get to a level that makes sense to our, as we mature. And there's um, the basic need of affection and esteem, connecting to each other, the people in your life that you love, that you know, all of those impressions and places and spaces. And there's the power and control, empowerment, which is part of everything. I don't know about you, but this is the one that I regularly identify with. Um, so our instinctual needs are God-given because of our perceived or real deprivations, sometimes we overreact and they're not fully satisfied. These three energy centers begin at this early point in life. And the trouble is, is as we mature, and if we're lucky, we get to the age of reason, which Father Keating thought happened at the age of 14 or 15, we might use our rational facilities then to justify or glorify or rationalize what's, what we're doing in our life to try to still satisfy these really basic early on needs. The power of our unconscious motivations that's linked to these basic human needs that are present in all of us. These basic human needs, security, affection, control. You'll hear this over and over again throughout this practice. Instinctual, God-given, we're born with them. They're wonderful, we, we need them. They keep us motivated, but they can also become overwhelming. So Father Keating uses this term, the false self. And the false self represents when we repress or we inappropriately express these feelings later in life, where we become overwhelmed and need for one of these that then takes over. Um, cultural conditioning, group over identification can reinforce and support this false self. So contemplative movements in practice Prayer infuses and permeates the actions. Contem contemplation at its worst or best can be barren and aggravated and action without contemplation, sorry, action without contemplation <laughs> can be just godless. We need this contemplation. We need to be able to connect, connect to the contemplative state. So this is, Oh, this is my least favorite diagram. <laughs> this diagram is a diagram created by uh, Father Keating that talks about this process and it has numbers and I'm going to to explain this diagram with the words from Father Keating. So and and explain each one of the numbers and how we all kind of feed into each other with this. The motivations for many of our actions grow out of the false self system our unconscious childish programs for happiness generated by this energy center, this emotional programs for happiness. On a conscious level, our motivations are synonymous with our intentions. 
but on an unconscious level, our pure intentions and motivations are laced with our desire for security, affection, and control. So on this chart, number one here, this energy centers, this emotional programs for happiness. Um, they're located in this triangle, security, affection, and control. And they're the unconscious programs that then as we mature, they are part of our unconscious and they move into our everyday life. And with, that happens in the form of attractions and aversions. And then we can tap into these hidden agendas. What do we think we're trying to do and how might we do that? A triggering event might happen, which brings about frustration and upset. And if we're lucky at 5A, we might have a practice that could break that cycle. But for me, typically, I then go right on to my emotions. I have this internal dialogue that justifies what I'm doing. Um, I go through all these things and it reinforces my needs for power and control, security, affection, and esteem. So all of these things. So what's another way to look about the formation of the false self? We have these programs for happiness we talked about. All right, those happen in early childhood. Then as life goes on, we have coping behaviors that develop. I need to make sure I always have enough to eat. I need to know that I am safe. And we have various mechanisms. I need to know I'm in control. And you know yours. You've developed ways to make sure those happen for you. Then we have our social group. Now we need affection and esteem, but sometimes people pleasing, the wanting people's esteem, it becomes more important. We over identify and that we sacrifice our own needs and desires for the benefit of the good. And then there's cultural baggage. So for me in particular, this cultural baggage, I always went, what, like, what is, what are they talking about? And then I read books about, um, I'm a white woman, lives in Hawaii, um, I'm comfortable. I have all these things that I come in, white privilege. I have things that I'm privileged, not because of the money I have or anything else, but just because of what I look like. And I'm an, a senior now. And there's a whole bunch of privileges that happen just because of what I look like in the world. People will help me without being asked. Um, people will do all kinds of things that this is part of my who I am. And that's also part of my cultural baggage because it, it filters the world. I think everybody gets treated like I do. I see the whole world through my eyes. Now I know enough to know that that is not true, but it's very difficult to know it on a, on a deep level for me. So we've talked about the false self, the false self, the center of gravity, the false self is the self, those energy centers. The true self is about God, about that connection where you're drawn to God. When you're in your true self, the gravity, the pull of God is strong. Now, what strikes you about the formation of the false self? What is this? Now, this is not an easy concept. And those of you who've been through Centering Prayer, I've heard of this before. Some of you may have read these books. Some of you may be experts on all of this. But for others, it may be new. So you're gonna have three minutes to speak with each other about what strikes you about this false self? I give you an extra 30 seconds. <laughs> lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay, so here we go. I hope this is helpful for you. I find being able to talk about it a little bit really helps me as I go along learning these things. So the false self, it's a monumental illusion, a load of habitual thinking patterns and emotional routines stored in the brain and the nervous system. So I really, the nervous system is part that I really connect to and I find embodying it by actually wiggling a little bit really is helpful to me. And I have, I don't know about you, but there are a gazillion things in life that happen to me that I get triggered into this place where I'm responding to things, I'm reacting to what's going on as if someone has pressed a giant button on my triggers, triggering events. 
what are triggering events? Look, let's look at these and, and how, well, how triggering events fit into this whole process. So our, we have desires, aversions, things that, are, are, that we like and want, and they are what are triggered by the triggering event. And also our triggering events are partially, what would be a trigger for us is linked to this. This, what are things you're attracted to? What are things that you are adverted from? Now, when our frustrations happen, when we've been triggered, um, maybe in there you have a moment for an embodied pause to consent to God's presence and action. But typically not for me. Typically, you know, when I'm lucky, I, I do this. But usually I spend one full round going through a, a series of emotions. I put a whole bunch of them on here for you so that you can find at least one that might be for you. But I find that I get triggered and when I get triggered, then various things come up for me. And they come up. Now, often then, if I am lucky, I can then take another minute and engage in my welcoming prayer practice, which can then put this in this place. It doesn't get rid of what I'm feeling, but it brings in the divine indwelling. It allows the divine indwelling to be with me. I still have all of these feelings and sensations. Some may get resolved, some may not. Other things may come up for me that, that they resolve into other issues, but maybe not. It may just be that I'm in this place that I know that I have the divine indwelling, that divine presence that's with me, I acknowledge it. So what are ways that I know that I am in, triggered? So there's, there's things that are clear that are emotions, but there's also the embodied part. So I get a pain in my neck and maybe you get pains in your neck too. And often it is from something that is irritating to me, that is a trigger um, or a headache. And, and which again, when I get overwhelmed by things and I can't quite process them or live with them or welcome them in my being, here I am, a, a Hawaiian person standing with my back to the ocean, which is not something that's recommended. And that itself can trigger me to where I don't even know. I didn't even realize that I'm being triggered by the environment around me. Back pain, I'm carrying the world's problems around. I see that this is happening. Um, a, a tummy ache. The now, that place between your rib cage and your pico, you feel this here. So, Margie, would you like to read this for us? I'm now unmuting you, Margie. <laughs> I'll try again. The false self is a monumental illusion, a load of habitual thinking patterns and emotional routines that are stored in the brain and nervous system. Thank you. That's wonderful. So now you, you guys have got it. You got it down now. You know I'm going to let you go again and talk about how do you know you're being triggered? How do you know you're entering the frustration zone for yourself? What does this mean for you? Right? So if anyone wants to share something in the chat, um, I'm assuming this at this point, we're pretty good. No big questions. If you have any big questions, you can unmute yourself. But otherwise, Annie has just joined us because the time changed to, to California. It took her a long time to get here. But um, we welcome her to be here with us today. So it's always so much fun. Excellent. So we're going to go on our merry way into the things that might be even more significant than triggers. Um, so this is, a, this is Paul, was, was a quote from Paul to the Romans. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. How many of you can identify with this? Raise your hand. Excellent. So I don't even need to speak to it. You understand it. We do things that we don't understand why we do them. Now there's, there's things that we get triggered and then we have these emotional responses, but then there's like systemic things like 
I was raised by addict alcoholics. And then of course I married them, even though it was really not something I wanted in my life. Um, there's these things that we do that we look back on our life and we go, why did I do that? And again, you know, it's a mixed bag. We have some of both going on. We have our true self, our false self. All of these are, things are happening. We don't need to beat ourselves up, but knowing it and recognizing it and seeing it as an opportunity to consent to God's presence and action in our life is so important. So this Apostle Paul poignantly captures the human dilemma in this famous passage from Romans. The split between intentions and actions seems to be a universal human experience. We intend one thing and we do another. Intention implies a choice, a conscious aim or purpose towards something. Living intentionally means living with a deliberate purpose in mind, paying attention to whether or not we're keeping our intentions moment by moment. However, like Paul, we may intend to act as God's instruments of peace and love in all of our actions and interactions, yet we may find it difficult to carry that out. What gets in our way? Well, I, you know, the biggest one is when things let it in, get in our way. Margie, would you like to read this for me? I'm unmuting you now. Yes, to, to welcome and to let go is one of the most radically loving, faith-filled gestures we can make in each moment of each day. It is an open-hearted embrace of all that is in ourselves and in the world. Mary Morosky. So we'll just take a moment now, close your eyes for just a moment and feel and sink into your body. Just feeling your body in this place and in this space and in this time. We've, we've, we've experienced a lot. And let's welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I welcome everything that comes to me today because I know it is for my healing. I welcome thoughts, feelings, emotions, persons, situations, and conditions. I let go of my desire for power and control. I let go of my desire for affection, esteem, approval, and pleasure. I let go of my desire for survival and security. And I let go of my desire to change any situation, condition, person, or myself. I open to the love and presence of God and God's action within. I just needed to say that prayer there for a moment. And we're going to go into in-depth look at this prayer, but I just needed it right then. So thank you for being with me. The divine indwelling is here with us all the time, surrounding us, around us, with us. And when I look at this process, all these things we've talked about today, we have our energy centers. We have all the things that happen in life. And you can see for me, the triggering events are kind of most of life feels like anyways. And then there's all the responses that I happen. My bodily responses are the things I notice first because that's what I'm like. And oftentimes the responses are long. The internal dialogue, that committee in your head, the emotions that might come up, frustrations. And for me, when I'm in the right place, taking a moment to bring in the welcoming prayer, in any of these places, this, this helps me understand this practice and how to do this. So 
So again, why are we doing this? If holiness is being close to God, then the process of holiness is where God changes our attitudes towards the trials and tribulations in our life. And the good news is, you know, the human condition is an evolutionary process. Humans respond to reality. It includes our conscious intentions and motivations, as well as our unconscious motives rising from the energy centers. Good news is it also includes our fundamental goodness and potential for unlimited development into the higher states of consciousness. The welcoming prayer is a practice that helps us to embrace the indwelling spirit in every moment of daily life, to let go of the thoughts and feelings that support the false self system and to respond in love to any person or situation. So we're gonna take time for a little bio break here. Um, and if anybody has any questions and they wanna stay for a minute or two, you can do that. But otherwise I encourage you to go on a bio break and I'll see you on the hour. Hi, Sandy. Nice to have you here. Hi, Vanna. I didn't get to open to mute you delicious beings again so that you don't have to worry about whether you're muted or not. But at any point, you can unmute yourself if you need to, want to. And we are going on to, you know, this. I, it gets more and more exciting. It's more and more fun as we go along, don't you think? Oh my gosh, it's so fun. So <laughs> we're now gonna talk about the welcoming prayer practice. So how do we do this? So I love this practice. And one of the things I love about this practice is that we all come to it in a different way and that we're all opening up to God in our own ways. So just like these roses, we have these beautiful roses and sometimes a rose is fully open and sometimes a rose is just a bud. Sometimes it's in between. Sometimes buds don't even open. They're still beautiful, but they don't open. And this is how I feel about my welcoming prayer practice. Sometimes I do the welcoming prayer and I feel like I've opened up and I've been able to let go and God is there and I get the divine indwelling. And sometimes I'm a little bud that's never going to open. And that's all fine. This is about your journey, connecting and being in the divine indwelling. So here we go to Margie's favorite quote, which she's gonna read for us again. I've unmuted you. To welcome and to let go is one of the most radically loving faith-filled gestures we can make in each moment of each day. It is an open-hearted embrace of all that is in ourselves and in the world. <sighs> so how do we do this? Well, the, the welcoming prayer has three movements. The first movement is this embodied movement where we feel and sink into the body. We sense the body experience in the moment. We have things that are in our tissues that are from life. The issues are in the tissues throughout our lives. We have all of these things. And we're, we're Christians. We, we know that our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. We, we know this already. So knowing this, then we have this incredible vehicle that we've been given to allow us to consent to the divine and dwelling, to sense what's going on in the world, to sense our past, present, and the divine in this moment. So now we're going to do our very first body scan. So get comfy. 
settle into your chair. I'm, I'm standing up, so I'm going to move around a little bit because that's how I get comfy. You might be laying down. However you're doing it, it is perfect for you. And if partway through you need to change and do it a different way, that's good too. So we've been sitting a while, so if some of you may want to do this body scan standing, however you do it, it's your, it's your body scan. So I recommend with your eyes closed or a soft focus so that you feel safe, that you know where you are in the world. And we're going to start at our feet. Feeling your feet connecting to the earth. You may be in shoes and socks. You may be bare feet. Notice your feet, the toes. And we come from our feet up to our ankles. Moving them a bit may have you find your feet and ankles. Coming up the calves and the shins. And as we notice, just notice anything as you feel and sink into this part of your body. This is a sensation experience. You come to your knees. thighs, hips, creation parts, the heart part you may be sitting on, or we often sit on, your back, Notice the sensation. If you're in a chair, notice the sensation in the chair. If you're standing, notice the sensation under your feet. Notice the sensation of the, the room around you, the space around you. It may be cold. It may be warm. You may have a tingling sensation. Just notice them. I need to change them, address them, or identify them. Even. Just notice them. Coming up the body. The now, the space between your rib cage and your pico. Notice. So coming up the body, the torso, notice the breath. Is your breath slow, fast, deep, shallow? Just notice. It's all about noticing and welcoming what we notice, welcome. Notice as we come to the heart, the rhythm of the heart, fast or slow, noticing, embracing the sensation, the arms, the shoulders, the connections of the arms into the shoulders, the upper arms, the biceps and the triceps, the elbows, the forearms, the wrist, the hands, the fingers, into the throat. Noticing the breath flowing in the throat, spoken and unspoken words and images, the back of the neck, the connection of the neck into the shoulders. Perhaps lift your shoulders and drop them. Notice if there's any sounds or sensations as you do that. Coming to the face. Let's go to the top of the head. Notice any tension in the head. Is there a space? Right now I feel it between my eyebrows. Notice the forehead, that space between your eyebrows. The ears and around the ears. 
the nose, the mouth, the lips, the jaw, and the breath. Breath is coming in, going out. The breath, perhaps place your tongue at the roof of your mouth so you feel the relaxation throughout your body, this bodily sensation. As we're going to progress with the body scans and as we do this the body scan we're taking lots of time to do body scan and we're going to do several body scans as we do them the body scan is in this extended practice is about building up our recognition of knowing what's going on in our body for many of us this is not intuitive where is our body? What are we feeling? This helps us build that knowledge and experience and so that when we it's time to connect to the body, we have this experience. We, we are developing it. And when we are in this place with the body scan, I see this as I'm dancing with my false self. Mary Morzowski talked about this, about the issues and the tissues and dancing with the false self, being okay with what's going on with our body, being here in the body. And for me, I need to do this sometimes, not just me dancing with the false self. I also love doing this practice with other people where we can really be in the place of the false self with our whole community, embracing. So take a moment, embracing, embracing. And which takes us to the second movement. And the second movement is that welcoming welcoming what you're experiencing this moment in your body and that welcome is an opportunity to consent to the divine indwelling an opportunity to consent to the divine indwelling so welcome 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 this can be a, a challenge the welcoming what we're feeling in our body and sensing for me, knowing that it's an opportunity to consent to the divine indwelling, welcoming what I'm feeling, somehow it, it, it's helpful. <laughs> it, it is the link that allows me to do this prayer. It's an active contemplative practice. It's not passive. It's not about tolerating or becoming a spiritual doormat. Welcoming is active, conscious embrace of ourselves and the situations in our everyday moments. In the book Centering Prayer and Inner Awakenings, we hear that the teaching is, this teaching, this welcoming prayer teaching is paradoxical. Common sense tells us that it's a, an unruly emotion is the problem. And the solution is to eliminate it. But by welcoming it, welcoming this instead, you create an atmosphere of hospitality, as we as we talked about in the in the beginning there with Rumi's poem, the hospitality of welcoming all, by embracing the thing that you once defended yourself against or ran from, you're disarming it, removing its power to hurt you. So now we're going to again do a body scan, and with this body scan, we are going to take time to welcome. So comfortable again. Make yourself comfortable in your place, whatever that means for you, standing or sitting or laying, however it's best for you. Developing our skills. We'll start at the top this time. 
We'll start above the body, even that air, that feeling, the sensations around you. And coming to the head, feeling the sensations. Or perhaps there aren't any specific sensations you feel as you're doing this practice. That's okay. There's no right or wrong way doing it. The only wrong way to do it is to not do it. So here we go. We're in our, we're feeling our head. Is there tension? Is there relaxing? Notice your forehead. Notice your scalp. Feel and sink into that sensation. The cheeks. The jaw. Feeling your breath. Move your head a little in a way that's comfortable for you, allowing you to connect to the head and the neck. Welcoming all that you're feeling, welcoming any little sounds you might hear. Sensing them, feeling them, being with them. Coming into the throat, the neck, the shoulders, or the arms connect to the shoulders. The upper arms, these biceps and triceps. Elbows. Forearms, notice the wrist, the hands, the fingers. Moving them, even giving yourself a little massage as you feel and sink in. This is about building that body memory, knowing where is our body? How do we sense what's in this body? Coming to your torso, the heart, the rhythm of the heart. Just notice, noticing, feeling and sinking into that rhythm. The upper back. All through the back, we have our lungs. And down the torso, the lower back. The part we sit on. In our gut toward Na'au, that sensation coming to the hips and the creation parts. The thighs. And there's any sensation. Perhaps you're against a surface. This might help you sense where your legs are, the knees. Calves and shins. And 
ankles and the feet. Now, feeling the feet. Now notice, is there a place, as you did your body scan, is there a place that drew your attention? And if there is, go to that place and embrace that place. If there isn't, just notice, take a moment, and notice, is your attention drawn somewhere? Embrace that and welcome, welcoming, welcome, welcome, welcoming this experience in this moment as the opportunity to consent to the divine indwelling, the indwelling presence, the inner spirit. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Take a moment, just breathing in this welcome, sensing the divine indwelling. As we have the first movement is that feeling and sinking into the body. And the second movement is this welcoming, consenting, to the divine indwelling's presence and action in your life. And the third movement of this prayer is the letting go. And we let go by saying, I let go of my desire for security, affection, control. And embrace this moment as it is. So we'll talk a little bit about this third movement, this letting go so I know most of you are in this really deep meditative place, which is beautiful. And I'm just going to talk to this. You can keep your eyes closed. You can open them, whatever is perfect for you. We're going to have more time. We're going to do this welcoming prayer over and over. So letting go. So this may be the most difficult part of this prayer. We have a good mind and it tells us that we're right, like most of the time and that other people are not so right. And we know that we're right, so letting go can be a challenge. We have emotions and feelings, and these emotions and feelings will validate these thoughts. What we need to do, what we're, what we're invited to do here is to let go of whatever's happening on this internal level and surrender. so that we can see the world around us in a different way. We can see what's happening through a new filter with the divine indwelling, consenting to God's presence and action in our life. And so that we can actually see reality of what's, so that we can see the reality of what's actually happening instead of perceiving things through our thoughts and feelings. And so here we go. We are going again into the welcoming prayer. Isn't this like amazing to get to do this practice again and again? This is my joy in life is this practice. So again, we're going to do this with a briefer body scan this time. But I'm going to take you through the whole, well, I'm going to take you with the body scan all the way through this again. So, be comfy. 
Find a place to do it. If you need a sip of water, you need to stretch or do something. This is all about your needs, what you want, where you are in your wor world. <clears throat> So in your comfort place, with your eyes closed or open, this time we're gonna start at the na'au, in the center of our being. So let your attention go to that place, um, you might call it your gut, the na'au in Hawaiian, it's the space between your rib cage and your navel. And we're going there, we're gonna start here. I'm going to start in the center of our body as a different way because often when we're in the moment and we need to test it to see what's in our body, we can start in various places. And so we're practicing this by starting in different places to sense. Sometimes you're, you're, you will go right to a spot and you will know. But oftentimes, especially in the early days of trying to figure out what in my body is saying to me, I don't know. So for me, starting in the center of the na'al, this is the most likely place for me to feel emotions and sensations and anxiety and stress. So I like to start here. And in this practice of the body scan, we're gonna come out from the na'al, from your center, from your core. Noticing the sensations. And now notice in your body if there's a place in your body that's drawing your attention. <clears throat> For me, my attention was drawn to my shoulders because I'm carrying you all today. I feel this in my body. Let your attention go to that place in your body, scanning your body, testing your body. Let your place go to where you are gone today. And notice. You might have a broken heart. There have been so many losses. You might be feeling a sensation in your body. And let your attention go there. And now, take your attention to your lower body, your hips and your legs, your feet and scan this part of your body. Notice. Your mind is wandering. Just remember your in your legs, in your hips, in your feet. Noticing the sensations, the temperature, the air around you, sinking into the body. If you're against a surface, a chair, or a bed, or a wall, or the floor, notice. And then coming up the body to the upper body, the chest, the arms, the wrist, the hands. Taking your time. And then coming to the head and the neck. Maybe moving your head or you're lifting and dropping your shoulders. Noticing the sensations throughout. Feeling your jaw your cheeks, 
the eyes and the space behind the eyes. Any tension in the head. Now see where your attention goes again and welcome. Welcome that sensation wherever it might be, whatever it is. As an opportunity consenting to the divine indwelling, welcoming the divine indwelling, welcoming the indwelling presence. And let go. I let go of my desire for security, affection, control, and embrace this moment. And then taking it in your own time now, the welcoming prayer, the three movements of the welcoming prayer, feeling and sinking in, welcome, let go. Just take a couple of minutes here. And then slowly bringing yourself up. And taking a moment to be with our community here. I'm going to now give you an opportunity to share about this experience with each other. Letting go is challenging. I'm with you. And letting go is definitely challenging. Um, and it's about going through experiences, not around them. So the welcoming prayer is that we get to live with the experiences we've had. Um, I came into this prayer because my son had died and I knew I would never stop grieving. It was never going to go away for me. People say you get over it. You know, for me, I have lost many people from early childhood on, and I've never gotten over any of them. It's changed. I've changed. The world has changed. But unless I go through the experience, I, I get stuck. So this is a practice that's all about going through this experience, not around it, for whatever experience, whether it's a you know, a little thing that just bothers you because it's a traffic or your roommate leaves the dishes out or your dog did something you didn't like and it triggers you and there's those experiences or whether it's a deep embodied a whole life experience we get to live and experience them fully so i am a person who the issues and the tissues i get this i'm a mover i move around in the world and so when i look at this prayer i framed it in my context, which I invite you all to, to, to learn this prayer, the way it is taught, the way it's been shared with us, but that also integrated into your being. So I have this consciousness where I focus and I feel and I sink into the body. And I know that that is a conscious practice that I do. And I then take that time to welcome that experience and welcome the divine indwelling. And in that process, the unconscious. So when I let go, to me, this is really about letting go of all those unconscious thoughts and emotions that come up and embracing this moment. Embracing the divine and dwelling and embracing this moment as it is. So we have been doing this prayer in these extended times where we've taken 10 minutes, 7 minutes, 5 minutes to do the prayer. And 
when we, when, when I lead it or Mary leads or other people lead it, oftentimes you do 15 minutes of, of a guided meditation doing this prayer. But oftentimes we only have not even a minute. We might just have a few seconds to be with this prayer, to bring this prayer into our daily existence. And this is about doing the prayer on the breath. Inhaling acceptance, exhaling surrender. Being in the place where you can do that. Um, I recently had a, a welcoming prayer moment where I'm putting my groceries in my car in the parking lot and um, I'm at Costco and so you know there's all that stuff and they're not in bags and it takes you time and you're there and someone comes around and says well you get out of that parking space. And, you know, I, I'm not really sure that's what they said but this is what I heard. And when that happened I just well, I responded in kind, <laughs> let me be totally honest. And then I took a moment, turned around, faced my car, and did the welcoming prayer. I went into my body, I felt it in my heart, my heart was racing, my breath had gone up, I could feel it in my body, what was happening in this moment. I didn't want to be mean to this person. You know, we're wearing a mask, it's COVID, we're all nervous, all of these things happen now. and. I was able to welcome what I was feeling, welcoming the divine indwelling. Let go of my desire to tell this woman just what I thought of her and instead allow the divine indwelling, allow God's consciousness to be with me in that moment so that I could say, oh, I'm so sorry. Of course, I will be done in just a moment. Now my mind still did all these things in the background. I want you to know, I was like, you know, I just won't put the cart in the right place. I, whatever. I still had all of these things. I don't want you to think that because I did this, all of a sudden, I'm miraculously someone new. But in the moment, I felt much better and I was able to actually be kind to this person for a moment and smile and, and be all right. So on the breath, in the moment, inhale, acceptance, exhaling, surrender. Inhaling as we feel and sink into the body, noticing where it is in our body. The divine action, though only visible to the eye of the face, it's everywhere, it's always present. There's not a moment in which God does not present under the cover of some pain or annoyance or something to be endured, some consolation to be enjoyed or some duty to be performed. All that takes place within us, around us, or through us contains and conceals God's divine action. The welcoming prayer as a prayer of consent enables us to consent to God's presence and action and this prayer is essentially how we develop and cultivate this relationship with God. Our deepening desire to align our will with God's will. Part of this deepening relationship. This prayer heals the false self as it manifests in everyday life. Our desires, passions, reactions, by consenting to God's presence and action in the moment, the welcoming prayer can heal the wounds of a lifetime by addressing them where they are stored in the body. The body, the warehouse of the unconscious, the container of the unresolved, repressed emotional material of a lifetime. The welcoming prayer complements the movements of the spirit in the centering prayer or your daily meditation practice, which can facilitate this purpose where we rest in the silent receptivity. receptivity. So let's look at these three movements again of the prayer. We're going to know this prayer. This is the goal today, that you know this prayer, you're comfortable. Whether you're new or, or maybe a new presence to it. So we feel and sink into the body. We welcome. And let go. And the prayer of I let go of my security, my desire, let go of my desire 
for security, affection, and control, and embrace this moment as it is. We know that we need security, affection, and control, but we let go of our desire and embrace this moment as it is because we're, we're, we were inviting the divine indwelling. We're letting go into the divine indwelling. This isn't into the abyss. We know the divine indwelling is with us, always with us and in us. So now let's just take a moment to look at what are the things, how do we know when to use the welcoming prayer? Here's our invitation to use the welcoming prayer. Recognizing the signs in yourself. When is it time to use the welcoming prayer? Well, you talked earlier about your triggers, your frustrations. Those are good things to know that when those things start happening for you, when you feel them, oh, look, it's a time we could use the welcoming prayer. Perhaps there's a bodily sensation that comes up for you that you notice when I'm tight here, when this is going on in my body, All right, go back a bit, um, that it is your signal to be in the welcoming prayer, whatever that might be for you. There may be a triggering event that happens, and we talked about these, and they can bring up all kinds of emotions. And again, this may be your opportunity to know, oh, here's, here's where I want to use the welcoming prayer. Well, part of the thing about the welcoming prayer is that we don't always want, can't always sense what's going on. We may be repressing what we're feeling. Repression is a defense mechanism that can prevent the unconscious emotions and reactions from coming to the conscious. The welcoming prayer, especially the body scan, can help us awaken to the issues in the tissues. What are the things that are being repressed in our body? We can sense that something's wrong. We don't really know. We can sense it in our body. It can be a great tool about around repression. Emotions, how do they manifest in your body? It's different for everybody. You know, when I'm fearful, I find I hold my breath and my tummy hurts. Um, you might get cold hands or feet. You might have tightness in the chest. When you're, I'm angry, I sense it another way. My heart rate goes way up. My breath increases. So you may notice this. You may have flashes of heat, surges of energy. Your teeth might clench. Oh, notice right now, are your teeth clenched? How are you right now as I talk about it, these emotions? Even just speaking about them can bring up a physical reality in your body. And the more we practice this prayer, the more we practice the welcoming prayer, we can move and become aware of our emotions as they manifest in the body. And then there's this pain and suffering. Pain is a common experience, whether it's emotional, physical, whatever it is. It is what it is. We have pain pain happens. Suffering though, the distinction we're making here is that suffering results when we're attached or, we're, or we have an, an adversarial relationship to what is. And the welcoming prayer is an opportunity to pray with this pain and suffering. And maybe in time the welcoming prayer can transform our attitude about the pain and suffering. And then there's just plain resistance. It's another defensive mechanism. There's nothing wrong with resistance. You know, it, 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 it allows us to not do things that maybe wouldn't be a good thing for us right now, but it can also sabotage our practice. Forgetting to practice and wanting to improve on your prayer. Oh, I can't do it till I can get it exactly right. Oh, I don't have it memorized. I can't do it now. Oh, I don't need the welcoming prayer or it's too complicated, whatever those things might be. So for me, I love the welcoming prayer as a way to enter into centering prayer because I'm resistant to centering prayer <laughs> versus the welcoming prayer. And I find that going into the welcoming prayer allows me to help with that resistance. So I see them kind of as a package. I love to do the welcoming prayer as a vestibule into my centering prayer and also as I come from my centering prayer.
because things come up in Centering Prayer. And so I have this resistance around doing these practices. So what about you? What are your times that you find that you're resisting or repressing? What are the things that would keep you from this practice? Are they physical things? Are they thoughts? Are they emotions? What is it for you? Oh. So let's just take a minute to um, sense what's going on in your body. So just, we're gonna do just a, a brief, I invite you to stand up. We've been sitting a long time. So, or many of you have been. So I invite you to stand up for a minute and, and just feel your body. Just sense what's going on in your body in this moment. Sense the experience. This last few people join us from the rooms. A couple people's wife connections have dropped out, so they'll be back. <laughs> and just feel your body. So if you wiggle your spine, it's coming up and down, it'll build your neurological pathways, helping you to connect and reconnect. And so a body scan, when we're standing, a body scan coming up from the feet particularly makes sense and feel your feet on the ground. If you're sitting, it's fine. You can do this any way you like, sitting or laying or standing. But you feel your feet on the ground, connecting to your ankles, your shins, the knees, the thighs, the hips. and moving your body gently in the space. So as we feel and sink in, we can be moving. It doesn't have to be in stillness. And I find that for me in particular, when I'm in a place where I'm feeling angst, moving helps. Sometimes it's pain. I have a fair amount of whatever's that cause pain. And a little bit of wiggle helps the neurological pathways, helps the synovia fluids, feed those nerve endings. And it doesn't have to be a big move, just a little bit, just to bring yourself into the place and space. And feel and sink into the body. And as you feel and sink in, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcoming the divine indwelling, the indwelling presence, throat, the neck, the head, lift and drop, lift and drop, shoulders, arms, knees, the sounds throughout the body. And welcome, welcome, welcome all that you're feeling. Welcome the divine indwelling, consenting. The welcoming is an opportunity to consent to the divine indwelling. And let go. Letting go of the desire for security, affection and control. Embrace this moment. Take a moment to embrace yourself. You're doing such a phenomenal job. You're doing great. You're doing just a wonderful practice for yourself today. And by practicing, you are making yourself different and the world a better place by all of these practices that you engage in your meditative, your contemplative practices. All of them are about you and what you are doing in the world, and it is amazing. Oh. Excellent. So we're just going to continue on. If you if you need to take a bio break, do. But otherwise, we're going to 
continue on with the challenges and how you can promote this in your life um, because why not? So let's look at the challenges. So we have challenges around, oh, let's see. Oh, you get to see my whole desktop. Let's do that differently. Let's let you look at this instead. <laughs> there we go. We can do the challenges. So challenges, attachments, and aversions. Attachment is clinging to something or an attempt to control the perceived source of happiness. Attachments arise from the instinctual drives for happiness, that security, affection, control. It can create compulsory needs, like when we eat or drink. We, when we really want is affection and love. An aversion is something we avoid. Letting go means passing the energy generated through our attachments or aversions by not running away, not pushing it back into the unconsciousness. We let go and let God, transforming the energy, beginning the healing process. Analysis. So we might want to think this to, through, you know, as we do the body scan, we might say, oh, I'm experiencing this here. This is about joy. This is about anger. It's not necessary. We don't need to know if it's security, affection, control. We don't need to know those. It's about experiencing them, being okay when feelings and sensations and memories arise, but we don't need to identify them. Um, and they might be linked to an attraction or an aversion, but we simply consent to God's presence and action within and embrace whatever it is we're experiencing in the moment, which we might want to try to fix. So I'm not saying you can't fix things, but when we're doing the welcoming prayer, the point is not to fix things. The point is the thoughts and emotions are not right or wrong. They're not good or bad, unless we decide that they are. In the welcoming prayer, we're not about fixing it or, or correcting it ourselves or others or the situation. Our intention is not to fix it, but to consent to the divine indwelling, the indwelling presence and the action in whatever we are experiencing in the moment. The welcoming prayer is transformative, but our only effort to accept that fact on faith and to consent during these three movements of prayer. And what's the most important thing we can do? We can say this in unison. <laughs> the way to understand this practice, this prayer is to do it. We only understand it when we do it because it makes no sense. I mean, right, it's completely illogical, completely irrational to think that we should be welcoming what we're feeling, welcoming all of these things. Does everyone agree it's completely irrational? We're all on the same page with this. Makes no sense. It works, but we don't know why it works. Anyone have anything they'd like to speak to with that? Such a quiet group. Oh, and Margie has lost her internet connection, so. All right, then we're going to go on to the next step, which is... Why do we do this again? I mean, what, why are we doing this? I mean, we do this so we feel better. There's that whole thing. But what's the deep reason we do this? And it's all about our relationship with the divine indwelling. It's all about our relationship with God. So the fruits of the practice. As with centering the prayer, sometimes the fruits are hidden and they may be noticed or appreciated by others before they're noticed and appreciated by you. When you welcome your own feelings and sensations, you may begin to notice changes in others. You may notice th that your relationship patterns change and they grow and they mature. And this may be about attitude and it may be that things actually change. But remember, it's really important to remember this practice is not about changing ourselves changing other people or changing the situation. It's not about that. It's about, it's a transformational prayer. It builds the atmosphere. The atmosphere around you does change when you do this prayer, but it isn't the point of doing the prayer. In the atmosphere, you may feel invited or motivated to change on your own according to God's plan. 
because as we consent to the divine indwelling, changes happen. It might be small, but changes happen. And with our intention and consent, these changes can take place within us. However small or hidden they may be, in faith we know the Holy Spirit transforms us inside out in God's time. On the exterior, we may only notice a change of how we relate to what we are experiencing. We might notice this, and everyone else may remain the same, and it might just be our attitude that changed. So for me, recently, I was at the dog park, one of my very favorite places, and I was there with a friend, and we talk a lot when we walk. We talk and walk. And at this moment in our talking and walking, um, we started talking about really traumatic things that happened to us early in our life heavy, heavy conversation. At the end of the heavy conversation, my friend said to me, maybe we shouldn't talk about these things anymore because we feel bad when we do. And for the first time in my remembrance, I burst into the welcoming prayer. I said, oh my gosh, this is the perfect opportunity for the welcoming prayer. So let's, let's take this opportunity to feel and sink into the body to welcome what we're feeling, welcome this yucky thing that we talked about, welcome the feeling, not that I'm welcoming the horrible things that happened, but I'm welcoming this experience in my body in this moment. I'm not welcoming the, the, what caused the experience in my body, but I'm welcoming what's in my body. And I'm welcoming the divine indwelling, and by welcoming, I'm consenting to the divine indwelling in this moment consenting to the divine indwelling and letting go, to let go of the desire for security, affection, control. Embrace this moment as it is. Now, all of us have deep pain in our life at some point. It may be physical pain, emotional pain, spiritual pain. We have this and, and there's images of bringing your pain to the cross. But pain which brings us into the moment where God is. Pain, when we allow the divine indwelling to be with us, can bring us into the moment where God is. And by exposing this woundedness, we make it available to be healed. Now, it may not be healed right then, it may take time, but we make it available. So Mary, who was with us earlier, this is a quote from her. And she leads a group, which I'll talk about at the end when that is, and it's in the meditation chapel. But it is amazing. The more we practice this, the more we recognize how these things can happen in our lives. So I invite you to think of a painful memory for you. Something we all, we all have them. Notice in your body where you have that experience. It may be physical pain. You may have physical pain all the time. You may have emotional, whatever this is, imagine it. And notice in your body. Welcome that experience. Welcome the divine indwelling consenting to the divine indwelling. And let go. Let go of the desire for security, affection, control, and embrace this moment. Practice, practice, practice. We're practicing. As we do this, we practice all the time. And as we practice, we're building new neurological pathways. So our brain has pathways. 
when we want a new pathway, we practice things. We have all pathways that are already there that are really easy to walk on that are the practices that we do already. And they're wonderful. They served us. But if we want a new pathway, we need to practice to build in that pathway so that we can make a choice to go to the new pathway. But the old pathway is downhill. It's really easy. So it's, it's easier to make the connection to the new pathway as we develop it will also become this nice, smooth path that we can go forward as we build our time. Each choice we make creates a focus for the brain and guides the neurons to talk to each other, creates new, context, new connections or reinforces old ones. Practicing the welcoming prayer is a way to create new pathways in your brain over time, which continued use, if we are lucky, they can become automatic or sort of automatic. And so that we get triggered, it also triggers the welcoming prayer as part of the triggering process. Automaticity, it's a characteristic we strive for when we're attempting to master a new skill. A repetition of a thought or action can eventually make it automatic. Practice, practice, practice. So if the welcoming prayer is something you want to have with you regularly, practice every opportunity you have on the breath, in the moment, practice, practice, practice. Now you may have other prayer practices in your life that are important to you. For me, I, the serenity prayer is a really important practice for me. I came to this um, through Al-Anon and 12-step and programs, various 12-step programs around addiction and alcoholism and all those things. And this is a practice that I continue to use. So the welcoming prayer doesn't replace your existing practices. It's in addition to those, one more tool in your box. And so this prayer, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. And as we do this, so this also brings about change in us. So our attitudes, when we go to acceptance, we are changing our attitudes. When we are courageous, it's about behavioral changes. When we have wisdom because the divine, we allow the divine indwelling into our lives, we hear that spoken divine indwelling, it creates a consciousness that allows us to be in our lives. <sighs> so the welcoming prayer. When I, I didn't say, but all of these images and everything that you want it is will be available for you if you want any of these things later. Um, we'll have links from the Contemplative Outreach website, but many of these materials are already there. But I will make this slideshow available as a PDF so that you can easily look at it and refer to it if you want. Um, but the and this is you know I created this image. This is from years ago, some birthday where I was struggling with my life and somebody took this picture of me, but it, it allows me to remember that no matter what the struggle is, we can go back. And you may want to create something with your own images in your life that help you remember why this prayer is important to you. So now let's talk about how we can build our practice. All right. Woohoo. We're in the final stretch. If you need to move, you can move. So the welcoming prayer practice. So I, I center twice a day. And I now do the welcoming prayer with each one of those centerings before and after because it helps me remember to stay in the seat. Now, if you want to learn more about the welcoming prayer, if you go to contemplativeoutreach.org, and you can also get this from our website, there's links to contemplativeoutreach.org, and many of these materials are there. But they have a whole section on the welcoming prayer. It's got brochures. It has a calendar with links to events to learn more about the welcoming prayer. 
Next weekend, they're, they're starting a four-week series that there's going to be two weeks on centering prayer, one week on welcoming prayer, and one week on the forgiveness prayer. So there's all kinds of opportunities. You can find them on their calendar. This event was on their calendar, for instance. There are ongoing welcoming prayer groups that you can find in the meditation chapel. So regardless of where you are in the world, you can go to the meditation chapel. They have an online calendar. You can search by welcoming prayer and you will find them. Um, and there's some lovely groups there mattering on your time zone may or may not work for you, but there are several that are, um, there's one that's like 3.30 in the morning here in Hawaii, which would work quite well for Dana, where she is. You know, it matters where you are. There, there's some that are in the middle of the day that would work well for people in other places. So know that they're there. And you again, go to meditationchapel.org, register yourself, and then you can search the calendar and it will give you links to all the chapels. They have several chapels. Many, many things happening in the meditation chapel besides this work and besides centering prayer. It's really awesome. Contemplative Outreach also has a welcoming prayer playlist where you can hear Mary Dwyer, Mary Lappin, you can hear all kinds of people leading um, welcoming prayer meditation sessions. Um, as well as I believe there's some actually on our Contemplative Outreach Hawaii site. And I have a little website where I do the welcoming prayer with movement. And so I have a website, meditate, uh, mindful brain dance that has these practices. So Carol, could you put in the chat the, oh, you did. Oh my God, you're a miracle. So she, Carol has put in the chat the link to our website and um, to the Meditation Chapel links. I see. But if you can put one for Contemplative Outreach Hawaii and the email for Contemplative Outreach Hawaii. So if you want to follow up, you have questions, other things, but she's putting some links in your chat, which you can um, copy and save the chat. If you go down to the chat at the bottom, there's three dots and you can save the chat or you can click on them right now and it'll open a window and you can look at it later. And if not, you can email us. So all of the above work. So spirituality and practice, again, it's an online group. They do welcoming prayer online retreats. They also have many publications. So the Contemplative Life Program has a 40 day uh, welcoming prayer practice booklet, which I recommend doing. I did this uh, with Carol at one point. We did it over email because we were at a place where that's the best way it worked for us. And we took way more than 40 days because she's very kind when I'd say, I need a couple more days on this one. Um, and because sometimes it takes longer to percolate. Some things you go, oh yeah, yeah, slam dunk. And some days it's like, oh no, I need two or three days for this one. So there are 40 day practice for the welcoming prayer, for, for centering prayer as well, but for the welcoming prayer, I recommend this one. Um, you can study Father Keating's writings, Open Heart, Open Mind, and The Human Condition. Great books. And there's a, a recent book that came out, a bio biography of Mary Marzowski, who is the one who created the welcoming prayer with her community and Father Keating. And um, it's written by her daughter. And it's uh, a nice, easy read. So if you're interested just in more about how did this happen, where did this come from, and who is Mary Mazowski. So I would welcome you to extend the welcoming prayer in your life. Practice it. You know, sometimes you could just do parts of it even. Do the body check. Oh, where am I at? Um, and then you know, sometimes it's longer or shorter. You might remind yourself by putting post-its up all over your house. You might have, I have reminders on my phone to, to set off little alarms that say, welcoming prayer, um, which then leads me into my centering prayer. So it used to say centering prayer. So it, however that works for you, there may be a time that you're waiting. So if waiting may be difficult, it may be a great place to do the welcoming prayer. Um, your vestibule into your centering prayer or coming from your centering prayer. If you're in a 12-step program, the end of the day review, which is a 10th step uh, in the 12 steps, uh, is a great place to use the welcoming prayer, but support each other. Maybe you want to do this with each other, talk to each other about it. 
you you've gotten to know each other a little bit here in the rooms today and so hopefully that will build on to your life again the fruit of the welcoming prayer we get to practice with the divine indwelling allowing us opportunities to respond instead of react embrace instead of fighting or suppressing our emotions freely and loving moving towards appropriate action when we let go and embrace the divine indwelling in our reality we may then be free to experience a divine presence which can heal and provide our needs and transform us. So Margie is not here. Would anyone else like to read this? From Philippians? I'll read it. <laughs> okay. Go for it. All right, do not be anxious about anything but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, be present with God. Philippians 4, 6. It's a promise. And would anyone like to read this? I will again. <laughs> Holiness is the process whereby God changes our attitude toward our trials and tribulations. Thomas Key. And then, Jonna, would you like to read this for us? Sure. Uh, wait. The welcoming prayer is the full embodiment of surrender and embrace. Mary Dwyer. So we get readings from people who are no longer in the world and we have readings here from people. You can hear Mary Dwyer. She's one of the people you'll hear in the, in the contemplative outreaches um, playlist on YouTube. And she's someone who helps when they do their workshops um, as well as Mary Lappin who was here earlier. So we are at a place where we're gonna say thank you and then we'll, we'll chat among ourselves. So uh, weekly, there's three groups that I know of that meet weekly in the meditation chapel. Hawaii times, there's Margie and I lead a group, 7.30 on Monday evenings. Um, on Thursday, 6 a.m. Hawaii time, Mary Lappin leads us one and she's in uh, Minnesota. So for her, it's the middle of the day. And there's one, uh, another one that recently came up Sue Miller leads one that's at 3.30 in the morning Hawaii time, which again, for those of you who are somewhere else, uh, might be a good time because that's 6.30 in the morning in California. That might be like the perfect time. I know in our group on Monday, we have people coming in from Europe. We have quite a, uh, and South Africa, um, because it's morning for them and they love to do the welcoming prayer in the morning. And so here we go. So now it's a time where you can share whatever you might like. All right. Well, blessings on you all. Well, then let's just take two, uh, let's do a three minute centering or a welcoming prayer before we go. And then if you are in a place where you're going to go into your centering prayer, I welcome you to do that. So uh, let's just do a brief body scan. So we're going to feel and sink into the body. I'm going to mute myself for a minute so I can pull my chair up to do this with you in a chair. So just take your breath into your body. And let's scan from the top down. So starting the top of your head, notice any tension in your head, your scalp. And 
the back of your head. Your forehead, the space between your eyes. Tension around the ears. Or not, but just notice the space around your ears, your cheeks, the nose. Lips and the mouth, the jaw, coming to your throat and your neck, moving your head, feeling the movement. Your shoulders, bring your shoulders up and drop them. Did you find tension? Did you find you were holding something? Just notice. Moving the head and the neck and the shoulders. Notice. The arms the biceps and triceps, that upper arm, the elbows, the forearms, the wrist, the hands, the fingers. Feeling and sinking into the sensations any tingling, any the temperature you notice. As I come to the torso, I notice the temperature, the breeze. I have a fan going. It's quite warm in my room. Just notice that for you, where you are. Notice your back, the surface that you're on. Breath as it comes in and out of your back, and your lungs, to your front, the heart and the organs, and all those spaces in between. The now, your gut, your hips and creation parts, noticing them. The thighs, the knees, the calves and the shins, the ankles, the feet, toes, maybe you wiggle your feet, feeling the sensations, and then coming back up the body just scanning at your own speed and noticing all throughout your body. there was a place where you noticed, return to that spot and embrace. And if there's no particular spot, just allow your attention to flow in your body. Notice the flow and embrace. Welcome, welcome, welcome.
Welcome, welcome, welcome. Consenting to the divine indwelling. The indwelling presence. The divine indwelling, this embodied experience of the divine, this presence, consenting to the presence and action of the divine indwelling, and let go. I let go of the desire for security, affection, control and embrace this moment as it is. Feeling and sinking in, sinking into the divine mystery, embracing the divine mystery and being embraced by the mystery as we gradually learn to live from Living from this place. And stay in your rested place here, knowing you're building up this reservoir and this experience of the welcoming prayer that you can tap into whenever you need. As you welcome, welcome. Aloha kekahi i kekahi. Take care of each other in love.